Unit 7, okay, we'll start by our book first and then we might have presentation. The second part of the presentation, you should continue it uh, at the end of the lecture. Okay, so last time we talked about decisions. Remember? Yes. Okay, Heba gave us, uh, Heba and uh, Rehab, right? What's your name? No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, they didn't show up. They gave us a wonderful presentation about making decisions. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, what did you get from last discussion? How do we usually make decisions? Hmm. Yes, please. First, we first we make assumptions. Mm -hmm. Okay. That we that that we under discussion it shows that it's valid and it holds in front of criticism. Mm -hmm. And then we may then we might adapt our decision to this findings that we find or the conclusions that we deduce from a certain event or a topic or a discussion. Eventually we have a conviction <laughs> okay. of what we have decided. Mm -hmm. So, basically, how do you make your decision? Not according to the reading. I make my decisions by thinking it over. If I'm talking personally, I would look to the pros and cons of it, and then I would weigh it. Does it fit me personally, fit my lifestyle, my way of living, my way of thinking? Then I would go about and implement what I do. Okay, thank you. I make decisions pretty fast, I don't think. I just do. Okay. Yeah. This is one type. This is another type. This is another type. I think that one's surroundings and background would affect decision making because uh, like family, friends, and other people who are surrounded by, by, uh, by that person or that person is surrounded by would affect his decisions even if he wasn't asking for their help or, or um, consulting them, he would, it would affect his decision making. Sometimes the decisions we make may affect our friends and families. Move us, like, yeah. Oh, not only ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Huh. What else? How do you make decisions? Huh? Rama. Um, I'm like her. I don't usually think too much in my decisions, but I, up to what I see is right. I don't care for other opinions. Okay. How do you? It's hard for me to make a decision actually, but it depends on the situation. If I need to make a decision fast, then I rely on my background information and my intuition. If I have time, I can think about it, gather more information, and then decide. So it depends on the situation. If you need quick, fast decision, you can act impulsively and give a very quick decision. But if you have time, you're going to judge it and judge the alternatives and see and test them, all of these, until you find uh, or reach a final decision. Okay, what about you? Hmm? I think about it first, I look at the positive side and the negative side and see which will affect me better and I make this a decision. Okay. I take my time. You take your time. Good one. Okay, how do you make the, your decision? I don't think about it. You I don't just think about do. it? Okay. I just do anything. Sorry? I just do anything. And okay, you just do it and uh, take the consequences? Yes. Okay. So, some of us, yes. So sometimes we can delegate. We can delegate taking the decision for an expert. So when she, see, uh, when she says, I delegated or I asked my mom, this is delegating for the wiser, the, those experts. So sometimes we find ourselves tending to have a good opinion of those who are have, uh, who are experts, have more experience than us, wiser than us, and all of this. Okay, you know, you didn't tell me. How do you take your decision? Um, I consider all different aspects. Like, I'm a very 
I'd say no, a mental person. Yeah, that that's one way to put it. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, like I usually worry about the extremes before the good outcome. I when I take a decision, I always think of the bad before the good, and it kind of really ruins the decision making. And when I get really tired, it's true. I just go, you know, I tell my mom to decide for me. I'm like, you decide, I'll be okay. It's we'll decide, and uh, but sometimes she just choose something, and I'm like, no, that's not the right decision. <laughs> Just do. <laughs> okay, my practice. Actually, the reading today is very interesting. Uh, it gives us two contradictory extremes. Okay, those who take decisions based on scientific analysis, based on testing hypotheses and testing these hypotheses and uh, working on them and see uh, whether they are uh, right or wrong, and those who take it like a hunch. Okay, I just feel like it. Yeah. Okay, so again, the reading is going to present two contradictory examples. Before we start reading, let's discuss these words. Do you find any of these words ambiguous or not familiar? Unfamiliar? Huh? Okay, so deduce. Deduce, this is what you are, we are going to conclude when you uh, read about... Uh, uh, something and infer or imply. Infer or imply means you are going to deduce, you are going to conclude between the lines. You are going to understand the hidden meaning between the lines. What can be concluded or what can be deduced in the uh, future. Hmm. Sorry? Okay, that's showing to me. Hypotheses. Okay, this is. What we are talking about, okay, a hypothesis, this is unproven statement. It's a statement, like a claim, okay. We claim something and this is called a hypothesis. But, uh, this is not, okay. But at the end, we can find that they are right or wrong. So, hypothesis like a claim, okay. And you need to check whether it's going to be... Not theory, it's a claim. You claim that this is wrong before the theory. And if it proves to be right, you can write a theory or you can reach a theory based on these hypotheses. Like assumptions, excellent. It's a sort of assumption, okay? A claim and you are going to try to test it, okay? So here, when you are treated for an illness or injury, do you feel more comfortable if the medical doctor quickly determines what, are, uh, what you are suffering from or if the doctor takes a long of time? Hmm. Okay. If he takes a long of time, why? Because that means that he's not rushing into conclusions. He's taking his time, uh, taking the symptoms and deciding later that if he rushed into something, because it happened to me before, and they rushed into something, and then I figured out that I have something else. So I, I don't believe in, in doctors who will give you the, instant. yeah, yeah. It's instant uh, feedback or instant diagnosis. Okay. Both. Because if you know you have a cold, but I mean, you need to get better, so you need to go to a doctor and get medicines, you know, prescribed, then you know, it looks at your throat and then, you know, it takes your temperature and it's obvious you have like a cold or a tonsillitis, then yeah, it's quick. He doesn't need that much. But also sometimes if I'm going in for a common cold and then the do doctor takes his time and, you know, asks for like a blood test, I worry. I'm just like, it's a cold. What do you want? What do you want? Okay. Uh, others? I think it depends. I think, yes, there is, a, there is, a, there is room for the doctor's experience mm -hmm. when it comes to minor illnesses. Yeah minor illnesses, but nevertheless, there are lots of diseases that hide under common symptoms. So, a bit of, a bit of scratching the surface is good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't care for it. <laughs> like, if, he, if they tell me something, I, I usually go with it. I usually leave the things to the experts. Because I told you, I don't think, I just do. <laughs> okay, good one. Okay, what about you? Like they said, some cases need to take a quick uh, decision um, for the doctor. Others need to take the time. Some lab analysis and all yeah. of these. I think both. 
because um, like he's the doctor, he's the expert. So if he knew immediately what I have, so I will trust him. But at the same time, uh, if for example it's something serious, of course you will be uh, like you will be not you won't be sure if it's right or wrong, and you want to take more tests, you want to go to more than one doctor. So yeah. Okay. I think they are experts. Okay, so you trust them whether doing decisions or uh, taking Yeah, of course. Time. They know better than me. Okay, they know better than me. What about you? I like the fast decisions because I don't like doctors. I like that they are fast. <laughs> of course. This is good. Okay. Simply, she likes, she doesn't like uh, doctors and she likes fast decisions. She doesn't prefer to go to doctors. Okay, so... If we look at these decisions, okay, some of them may seem simple, some of them may see, seem very uh, serious and they take or they need a lot of effort and a lot of thinking, okay? So here, some of these decisions are, uh, can be made quickly or are made quickly and some are more deliberate. So tell me, which one would you take quickly and which one? This decision would you take after deliberate thinking and meticulous thinking? Okay. One by one. Um, choosing movie to see, I pick randomly. Like sometimes I'll read the description for the movie, but we've done it before, me and my friends. We walk in and we don't know any of the movies, so we just count randomly and then we walk up to the guy. We're like that movie. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, choosing a movie, a movie to see because it wouldn't affect. It. It might. Um, Consume my time, uh, but it's not. It wouldn't affect my life in any way. So yeah, I think it's. Uh, I have to watch the trailer, and then I have to show everyone else that's going with me the trailer, so we can all make a decision to watch the movie. No, no, no. That's 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 the only that's the only time I will make a decision and take the time to think about it. I don't know, like it, when really hard, like you know, schools. When they ask me to choose a school, I can't make that decision. When they ask me, "What do you want to eat?" I can't make that. But for like stupid stuff like this, I'm the first one to make the decision. <laughs> this is not stupid. This is good. Uh, deciding what clothing to buy. You know, you stand in a shop and you just don't know what to buy. It's really difficult. It takes time. Yeah, okay. it takes time. Deciding what to buy, for example, for Rama, it takes a lot of time to make to reach a decision or to make a decision. Mm, uh, decided the long time. You mean deciding, uh, girls? Please. You mean uh, you want? Which, which one quickly? Which yeah. One you uh, quickly. Which one you're going to be deliberate and think more about? I'll think more about if someone is guilty in a crime because, like. You might be wrong. And choosing the college and university because it's my future. Movie, I think, quickly. Um, game, chess, I think also I need time to think. Uh, whether to trust a stranger or not, I'm usually relying on my intuitive. intuition. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Huh? Which one are you going to choose very fast and which one you are going to take? Very fast is choosing clothes to wear because I don't like shopping and hoodies and jeans, sneakers, I like my style. So I don't take a lot of time buying canvas. I watch, make, watching a movie, I take a lot of time thinking. Like in the mall, in the line, before we go buy tickets, I will open our phone, see the trailers of every movie they have, and then we decide what movie we're going to watch. Now, which decisions are you going to make it so fast, and which decisions are you going to take some time to do that? About choosing what movie to watch. Sorry. Choosing what movie to watch. Uh, I will take it quickly, but choosing my university or college, I will think about it. Over and over. Okay, thank you. Huh? Deciding to accept a job, it will take a lot of time. Yes. And choosing a card. Yeah, a movie to watch. Music, uh, yeah, cooking.
Yes, Your Honor. Just a minute. I think the most deliberate of them all is making a move. I think the most deliberate decision I've ever made in my life is making a move in a game like chess and deciding to accept a job. For me, when it gets to chess, I take forever to make a move. Forever. If I did this, it's going to be this. And if I did this, I'm going to be this. Even if there is time. No, I love the games that are not timed. Like when it's like you and a friend, you and a friend, and there is the board, and this game could go on for six months or a year. Yeah, because you both know. Yeah, because we both know when there is like two good players. It's it's the the game is the game is the fun. The game is the fun. Not finishing it. Okay. I think the most um, decisions that would take time for me to take are the uh, electing a leader or a club organization or the um, deciding whether someone is guilty or of a crime or not. This is good. <laughs> I think sometimes um, the decisions that we make are based on our personalities. Like I can't commit to something, so I won't. If you ask me to get married, I'm like, hell no, let's <laughs> commit. <laughs> so I think that it depends. Like some girls. Their personalities are more like wifey material. They'll get married the next day. They don't care. I'm happy about marriage more than... The... So uh, today uh, our uh, text is about Malcolm G uh, Gabriel. Mark, uh, he wrote a book about a blink. What's a blink? Okay. He is saying that this book is talking about the power of thinking without thinking. This suits Mariam. Okay, this Mariam, not this or that. <laughs> so, here he is talking about the validity of a hunch. Okay, hunches. Okay, your own hmm, intuition. Exactly, your own intuition. Is. So, here, if you have, the, uh, there is an experiment like this. If you have four stacks of cards, two red and two blue, and you know that when you, whenever you're going to draw one card, you're going to uh, lose more, yeah, lose some points or gain some points. And you're going to gain a lot and you're going to lose a lot at the same time. So, what are you going to do? How are you going to decide which color, which card color should I draw? Hmm? I think I will go with my one. You're, you're going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go one by one, one of each. And in my brain, I would. Okay, let's see. If it's a blue one, and I have gained, then that's a plus to the blue side. If it's a red one, and I lose, then that's a, a, a minus. Let's say mark for the red ones. By the time I would, you know, after like say ten cards, mm -hmm. for example, I would have a perception in my mind that a certain but it's not verified yet. No, it's not verified. And I think I would go by what you call a hunch. Yeah, this might be the winner. But I think that's what gets people addicted, by the way. The <laughs> okay. Exactly. Uh, just whatever comes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I wouldn't even think like you, like if, if Methan and the blue kept getting me a good, good stuff and then the red one didn't. I don't, because my luck sucks, so why, why do we bother? <laughs> because this is a game for me. <laughs> well, my strategy is to withdraw two cards only. I hope that they both would win, but if I lost once, then I'll, I'll try and win again. If I won, then that's it, I'll stop playing. I won't play again, because... What if the rules tells you that you have to continue till the end? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> simply throw myself. Quit, yeah. Okay, how would you choose? I would choose blue card because I like blue color. Okay, simply, this is a very excellent, this is a very fantastic, actually, answer. This is simple and to the point, and it's true. We sometimes just pick a number because it's our birthday, for example, or it's our lucky number, simply like this. So, this is... I wanted to say the same answer, but I would choose red, because red is my favorite. Red, your favorite, okay. So in general, okay, we got it that sometimes we can do or we can make a decision based on our simple 
desire. Okay, we like this, we hate this, we prefer this. You can even take the decision about people, whether I'm going to make a friendship or friend this one or not, based on the first impression, exactly, feeling. This is sometimes, and they say that first impressions last. Yeah, first impression lasts forever. But, yeah. Exactly. So sometimes it's the first impression and sometimes it's the analysis, the actual analysis. It's not true all the time. It's not true all the time. Okay? Exactly. And the, it turns out to be a very bad and mean sometimes. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our <laughs> reading today. So, uh, scientists made an experiment in the uh, Iowa University. They found that gamblers started generating stress responses to the rip decks by the 10th card, 40 cards before they actually were able to say that they had a hunch about what was wrong in, with these two thoughts or, or two decks, okay? So here, as you can see, stress actually affects different parts of our body. Brain, neck, it causes pain in the neck, heart, all these, even our stomach and our own intensity. All these tension or all this tension caused by stress might cause physical illness, okay? So they implied uh, or they have reached that our brain uses two very different strategies. One strategy is, we all familiar, this is that conscious strategy. Based on indicators, we have some facts, we have a, a, an experiment, we have tested this. From tangible experience, we can reach a conclusion by our conscious strategy. Yet, they said there is something called adaptive unconscious, which is a hunch. Our tuition. Okay, I just, uh, intuition, sorry. I just like it. Okay? Exactly. And this is what we're going to draw with our uh, previous reading. Remember, previous reading about uh, 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 Tulip Mania? Those who were Mania. Yeah, predicting what's going to affect their wealth and uh, this might cause wealth for me. And they go, this is the craze of the crowd, remember? So today we're going to talk about another point, how the power of the crowd can be effective, not causing crazy act or foolish act, okay? So actually this reading is uh, referring back to what we have studied in uh, reading two of uh, Tulipomania. And they are saying that actually sometimes we have this crowd or, uh, who take a good decision, especially in reading two of this unit, and sometimes we have this crowd who take lousy, bad, impulsive decisions and both are, the, or both depend on the situation, the situation itself, okay? So here, for example, in his uh, in, the, in this book about uh, Gadwell, he says that loving and learning come on the second and third state of these strategies. Like we ha uh, when we think, when we talk about how the brain uh, interprets things and ha implements these conscious strategies, we s simply can say, because I love this color, or, or because I learned that this is good and this is bad. Okay, so they come second. Even, can you see? Loving the thing comes on the second stage. Loving is like a hunch. Yeah, exactly. I just like it. I just feel like doing this. Okay? But learning, this, this comes in the third one, in the third stage. Okay? Or the third le rank. No, no. Actually, loving comes before the learning. Okay? So, this is his point. If we look at this uh, what 
our parents or what do we usually tell our children? Our parents used to tell us, for example, haste makes waste. And look before you leave. Look twice before you leave. And stop and think, or don't judge a book by its cover. This is what we uh, used to hear, what we used to hear from our parents, what, we, what I actually sometimes tell my children to do. But again, I myself find myself in some occasions, in some situations, unable to think twice before I leave, or unable to stop and think. Okay, sometimes you have to make very quick, fast decisions. Again, I, I resort to my experience, I resort to my feelings, I resort to uh, just a luck, okay, all of these, okay? So, sometimes we trust conscious decision making, but there are moments, particularly in times of stress, when hate doesn't make waste. When uh, uh, our snap judgment and first impressions can offer a much better means of making sense of the world. So sometimes haste don't, don't make waste, sometimes. And our feelings might be prevalent and overcoming all the obstacles uh, and all the indicators of good meticulous experiment or steps of uh, experiment. So if we look now to the WH word questions, okay, the true false, okay. I want you, before you look, read this sentence and go back to the reading passage, just skim the text quickly, trying to figure out which are true and which are false. Okay, so read the question first, read the sentence, the statement first, and then go back and scan the text. When scanning, you can do number B as well. You can scan for the WH uh, to, true false sentence and for some sentences. If you're doing the scanning, do the scanning for number A and number B. Number B, you're going to read these uh, sentences here. Go back and scan the reading in order to write the first few words that uh, uh, say the same idea or the original words presenting the same idea here. So. Scanning activity for activity A and B. Take time.
Have you finished? Not yet. Have you all finished or not yet? A and B. Okay. Take another minute. Who can start A? Number one, in the experiment with the red and blue decks of cards, most people had some idea of what was happening after 50 cards. True. Two. 
After 50 cards, true. People became suspicious of the red decks of cards even before they could explain why. True. After the tens, they start to suspect it. According to the reading, the unconscious brain works more slowly than the conscious brain. False. False. Excellent. Okay. Yes, please. Most, okay. Most people uh, make all of their decisions in either one mood or the other. Not both. True. Not both. Actually, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes yeah. we use conscious, sometimes unconscious. Exactly. It's written. Sometimes we use false. Not false 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 means it's not. Okay, not false makes it false. If it's stopped without saying not false, it's true. Okay, but here is it's writing not false. Actually, it's false because actually sometimes false effect works. Okay. Both of you. Okay, number yes. Number three false. Number four false because. Uh, not both. Uh, the decision to jump out of the way of a moving truck is probably an unconscious one. True. True. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. The saying in the last paragraph of the article, all, uh, all, uh, all urge people to think carefully before making a decision, false. What? It's, okay, again. Uh, we really only trust conscious decisions, but there are moments particularly when uh, in times of stress when haste does not make waste our uh, when our snap judgment and first impressions can offer much better means of making a decision decisions made quickly can be ve uh, can be every bit as good as decisions made cautiously and deliberately okay he agrees that he does not urge us all okay even here can you see My, I argue that, okay, he says sometimes, okay, yes, this is the mode for all of us. He does not advocate it like mm. we should. He does not use those words. So what is the... Personally, I say it's false because of the generalization. He's making all, article all urge people. This is generalization. This one's uh, haste, make waste, look before you leap, stop and think, don't judge a book by its cover. They, they mean these sayings. Oh, the, yeah. saying. the, the saying, yeah, the saying, not the conclusion of the writing. Okay, in this case, right. The reading suggests that we underestimate the value of snap judgments. True. Yeah. Exactly. The last one, Mary. Our brains do not work well when information is limited. False. We can make our own, uh, like, uh, yeah, this is my, yeah. yeah. Without interpreting this. Link, link with places that exactly. Are without, like, without being enforced to interpret why, we, uh, we, why have we uh, decided this or why we feel yeah. like this. Because, like, before you put false here, I already, like, it doesn't, I didn't understand how that has to do with that, but I already knew it was false because I don't limit my information even if the information was limited. Thank you. So we come to the codes, okay. I want you to read number one and tell Okay. You did it? Okay. The majority of subjects begin to suspect something after they played about 50 cards. Mm. Exactly. They found... They found that after we have turned over about 50 cards, most of us start to develop a hunch about what's going on. Exactly. Thank you. Huh. Number two. Number two. Uh, so far, there were no surprises. It's uh, line 22. This, that much is straightforward. We have some experience. Okay, this is straightforward. Okay, as you can see, they found, and this is much straightforward. Both are correct. Okay, the third one. Yes, another We have three more. Uh, we reflect on what we know, and in time we reach a conclusion. Line 44 to 46. Um, we think about what we have learned, and eventually we come up with an answer. Exactly. We think, and then we come to an answer, or we conclude that we deduce all are correct. Okay, I'm going to...
you the answer. I will show you the answer. But when we say but, it's 25, 45, or 25. We use okay, we use. Yes. Okay, we think about what we have learned, and eventually, this is her answer. Her answer is correct. Okay. Number. Okay. Is there a number? <laughs> but it has this advantage in it that initially takes place. It's line 52 when it says it has the drawbacks, however, it, that operates at least first and entirely below the surface of consciousness. So we see the synonym. Okay, for example, disadvantage. What's the synonym or the equivalent meaning for disadvantage? Drawbacks. And the previous one, like reflect. Okay, uh, reflect here, think. The synonym for it, think. Number five. Um, where he says on line 64, uh, no, okay, uh, it's like a huge microprocessor that silently and efficiently collects and analyzes a lot of necessary information. It's line 64, where he says the adaptive unconscious can be uh, thought of as a kind of giant computer that quickly and quietly processes a lot of the data we need in order to keep functioning as human beings. Exactly. So a huge micro, a huge microprocessor. This means the uh, adaptive unconscious technique or strategy that our brain usually develops in making decisions. So then we come to the word deduce. Okay. Some of you talked about what, what does it mean to deduce. Actually, deduce means to conclude, to infer or to conclude. And sometimes it means to imply as well. And we're going to have a, another exercise for imply. So we deduce or we infer or we conclude something from the reading or from some indicators. We have some evidence and we deduce. We conclude something else. Like here, for example. All other birds have feathers, okay? This is maybe a fact, okay? Uh, gadwall is a kind of bird, so gadwalls no doubt have feathers. We conclude that. All other birds, or uh, not baby birds, the adults have feathers. So by logic, we deduce that a gadwall is a kind of bird that has or a feather, or gadwalls in general have feathers. So, almost all species of bird can fly. Since a gadwall is a bird, so it can probably fly. This is our conclusion. However, gadwall is a duck-like bird, and we know that ducks, some types of ducks, simply don't fly. Okay, so likewise, generalization may describe something that is true in all cases or it may indicate a statistical tendency. So this statistical tendency, this is a gavel, okay? And as you can see, it's a duck and actually it can fly. So not all, the, uh, so the writer here wants us not to judge or over generalize a fact based on indicators. Okay? Okay? Uh, what's your question? <laughs> okay. So we're going to read the following statements and see can we deduce, can we make a generalization? Of, again, we're, not, we're going to avoid generalization. Here, Malcolm Gadwell uses this generalization to support his conclusion that we should place more trust in the first impressions. Okay? First impressions. We, Gina, first impressions. We should place more trust in our first impressions. Okay? This is his point. Okay? Write T for those statements that describe something that is true for all people. Okay? For all people, it's true. They won't disagree about it. And S for those that illustrate a statistical tendency. Maybe, according to statistical. Can I have a, can I add into this? Uh, theory? theory? Yeah. yeah. Like, we all say that, okay, that good has a power and evil has a power. Mm -hmm. So when someone is good, they say, like, now people are 
in inventing these devices that measure your energy. They say that if you are good, if you are pious, if you have like positive energy, this energy seeps through your pores and and, and com yeah, and even oh, consists. Yes, even consist an aura around you. And if it's strong enough, people with healthy like mentalities or healthy receptions will pick it will pick yeah, it up. Exactly. And right. yeah, sometimes you just meet this person and you feel whoa. Yeah, you feel this person is the warmest thing ever. And it did and when you when you deal with them, okay, they're they're good, they're loving, they're giving. And sometimes you meet people and they're like all jagged ends. You feel it and it's unexplainable and yeah. And they're mean. And they're mean. And they're mean. And they're mean. And you don't exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's why we can we can say that sometimes impressions and first impressions can last or uh, actually last forever. So uh, if you can say it's, uh, or if you're not sure about this is true for all people or statistically uh, trend, please, or tendency, please write N. Okay? So let's read sentence by sentence together and decide now. Yes, Torfa? After we've turned over about 50 cards, most of us start to develop a hunch about what's going on. After about 80 cards, most of us have figured out the game. Um, st statistical tendency. Exactly. This is statistical tendency because we have tried, we have experimented this. Uh, the adaptive unconscious quietly processes a lot of data that we need in order to keep functioning as, uh, as human beings. That's T. T. Describes uh, true for all people. Exactly. Like fact. Actually, this is fact. Proven fact that has been proved uh, true for all people. We toggle back and forth between our conscious and unconscious modes of thinking depending on the situation. True? True for all people. Uh, this is one of the mechanisms, one of the strategies that our brain uh, adapt, uh, receives and uh, reacts to these uh, situations. A person watching a silent two second video clip of a teacher he or she has never met will reach conclusions similar to the, those of a student who has sat in the teacher's class for an entire semester. False. Statistical tendency. Statistical tendency. Yes, please. Last one. We really, we really only trust conscious decision making. N. N. We're not sure exactly. Actually, not all of us. That's why we're saying N. So let's come to our vocabulary today, and we're going to concentrate on the form of the noun and verb and adjective again. And please. This is to check your answers quickly, okay? Please, I want you to concentrate. When you learn a word or when you study a new word, I want you to concentrate on its forms as well. So the book actually is very rich with tables like these. Please study these tables. Yeah, exactly. All these vocabulary tables should be studied in depth to understand what's the difference between the noun form, the verb form, adjective form, and adverb form if found. As you can see here, for adapt, for example, no, no, we can't say it like this. Adaptivity, it's now, it's a noun, okay? So in this case, we need to study these tables to know different forms of the word, and we need to study collocation as well. At the end of each unit, you have this marvelous table about collocation that gives you a hint about what comes with what. When you see this word, usually we, uh, uh, it comes with what uh, with other alternative words. So this build, this is part of building your vocabulary. Actually, this builds your vocabulary and uh, vocabulary items or words. So as you can notice, what's come here? The ending, okay? The huh? suffix, okay? The suffix, the ending of this wor words are T-I-O-N or T-Y or I-T-Y sometimes. T-I-O-N, S-I-S, T-I-O-N, okay? T-I-O-N and S S response only. Okay, so nouns end up with dumbness. Yes, we have happiness, so we can add N E double S. 
on each unit you will find different now. suffixes. Yeah, you will got, uh, find different suffix for noun. What about the adjective? Can you see? Able. Okay, A-B-L-E. Okay, I-B-L-E uh, sometimes. And E-D. Usually you can form an adjective by putting it uh, in the past form. And actually this is not a past form. This is the adjective form when, you, when we put E-D. And for example, I-C-A-L. Okay, and C-A-L as well. N -A optional, A-L. Okay, all of these. 90% of all adverbs, they end with L -Y. L-Y. Except for some adverbs like fast. I can say fastly. It's wrong. Except uh, wrong. I can say wrongly. Good. Yeah, well, good. The adverb is well. Okay, and the adjective is good and better, of course, for spurs. Uh, comparative, sorry, and superlative the best. Okay, so these tables, when I display the tables, I... Know that you can distinguish between these, because you have studied this in 99 and 11 and all of these, okay? But again, I just want to stress that studying this table gives you a hint about the form of the verb, okay? The final suffix, the final addition to the uh, root of the word, the root of the word, okay? And how these suffixes might change the form of the word from noun to and adverb. And again, the collocation. We're going to do an exercise about collocation. Because some of you, actually all of you, yeah, did well, did excellent in your midterm. But some of you uh, simply said, we can't discriminate between an adjective and adverb. Okay, we use these tables from the very beginning to discriminate. This, this is self-explanatory. <laughs> And for not, uh, no, I'm in, and, uh, 97 and 99, usually we take this at the uh, early stages, okay? Again, it's not too late, we can do it now, okay? So, let's read and try to think about the space here needs an adjective or an adverb or a verb or a noun, okay? Rama, would you please start? Yes. Thin slicing is the word? Yeah, thin okay. slicing. Okay, is the ability of our, is the ability of our unconscious mind to deduce characteristics exactly. of person's behavior and personally from very brief enco encounter. So she said to deduce. Why we put the verb form? Because it's preceded by to. So to infinitive form of the verb. We understand this. Okay. From here, the character. Okay. Characteristic of the of person behavior and person. Personality from a very brief encounter. It it is called thin slicing because a slice of experience may be all that necessary for us to form an accurate, an accurate impression of someone and responds quickly to any situation. You can respond quickly or adapt. adapt. Exactly, it's a verb. Okay, we uh, so we can, because here it says. Uh, a form, uh, sorry, to form or to adapt, and to adapt. Okay, so this is a verb form. Because? Um, adapt quickly to a new situation. Uh, thin slicing is vital for operating successfully in a fast-changing environment because it is unconscious and automatic. We can size up a person quickly, instantly, narrow our options for dealing. So narrow our options. Options, this is what? Um, what form of the word? Uh, options as a noun. Noun, okay. Because we are, we're, we are talking about something we can possess. And we possess tangible nouns, okay? Uh, for dealing with this person and decide on an appropriate response. Exactly. Appropriate response or sometimes appropriate reason, okay, can fit. Okay? Appropriate reason, appropriate response. The point is noun. Yeah, exactly. a noun is preceded by an adjective. Movies and television programs make good use of our ability to thin slice. When new characters appear, our brain is in thin slice mode. Mode, exactly. And mode means uh, form. form or state. Or state or style, all of these. Mode like style, like state, like form, all of these. Okay, good. A brief glimpse or several lines of dialogue can mm, 
I, no. Much about a character's personality. Can imply. Excellent. Okay, can infer, can deduce, can conclude, can imply. All are synonyms. Okay? So, let's move to a hypothesis. Okay, let's check. You can check your answers here. And let's move to the word hypothesis. Okay? Again, we have explained this. What does it mean? Hmm? What does it mean? A hypothesis, a claim. Okay? Exactly. So a hypothesis is an unproven statement that makes a claim, usually about causes or effects. So to test a hypothesis, first we ask what the hypothesis implies. It refers to what? Uh, we want to prove what? Okay, this is the first thing, like this. In this hypothesis, if this hypothesis is true, what other things have to be true? What other things can be built on it? Can be built on this hypothesis or in, on this claim or on what you have come up with? Okay? So, here for example, if bald-headed people take this medicine, their hair will grow back. But what if their hair didn't grow back. Okay? Then the hypothesis is going to uh, is not is going to be false hypothesis and it's not true. And you should claim for refund or ask for refund. Okay, so this is the point of a hypothesis. A hypothesis, you need to test it. You need to check whether it's true or false, whether it's right or uh, faulty, okay? Like the following exercise. I want you to use here, using your powers of deductive reasoning. Okay? Deduce. Conclude. And complete the sentences with a prediction. You're going to make a prediction. A guess. Like a guess. What would have to be true if the hypothesis is true? If each of the following hypotheses is true, what would you guess? For example... Here, the hypothesis that say emotions originate in the heart. So if we're not sure about this, this is a hypothesis. So if the emo or if emotion actually generates from the heart, this means that people with artificial hearts will lack emotions. Or those who are suffering from heart disease will uh, uh, be suffering from uh, malfunction in emotion. Okay, or they, their emotions are not going to work properly. They will feel less. They will feel less, for example. Okay, so I want you to read the following hypothesis or hypothesis actually, and try to uh, try to come up with your own prediction. What uh, what can you deduce? What can you conclude? Uh, what can be inferred? And all of these. Okay. Okay, start. What? Not working. Okay, I want to close. Exactly. Okay, I'm not listening. I can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can start number two. Yeah. Hmm. Wait. Uh, music is a part of being human. If this is true, we can predict that people who do not listen to music are robots. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good uh, assimilation, actually. I thought you were going to say animals or something, but robots, this is very polite assimilation. Thank you. No, I want to answer number four. Okay. I want to do number four. I want to do number four. Number four. Oh, fine, fine. Oh, yeah, number two. Uh, um, hypothesis, music is... No, sorry. Um, oh, my God, where are we? Oh, yeah, yeah, number three. Drinking a small amount of coffee temporarily improves memory. For this statement, we can deduce that people are stupid by nature. <laughs> Another people are stupid by nature. Okay, this is her own. No. Okay, people are stupid by nature. Okay, so I want another, another one for this number three. Sorry. You, um, uh, we can deduce that coffee improves memory. Exactly. Or coffee... Alerts the brain. Alerts the brain. Okay. You're... 
Uh, humans are good at concentrating on two challenging tasks at the same time. Uh, if this hypothesis is true, then human beings are able to multitask. Um, humans are good, uh, are good at concentrating on two challenging tasks at a time. If this hypothesis is true, then women are superhumans. Su superhumans. Superhumans. Right. Superhumans. Huh? Another hypothesis. Anything? Do you know that there was a study in Germany that proved that a woman can multitask ten things up to one? We've discussed this. Yeah, we've discussed this. And we says this is because the two hemispheres are not totally separated in women's brain, but uh, in men they are distinctively. This proves we're superhumans. Yeah, we're superhumans. <laughs> uh, if this hypothesis is true, then production scale should be by double. And should, should be production double. scale should be yeah, double. Should be double. Good. Uh, if this hypothesis is true, then people, uh, what do you call it, can be, um, the average of people's brains can be very high. Intelligence? Yeah, yeah. the intelligence. Does it mean that the, uh, their average intelligence or the IQ? Yeah, it's IQ very high. Should be uh, higher than, but I can't re recall the uh, average. Like 120. One, no. So it should be higher than 120, the IQ. For example. Can you just call it average? Yeah, of course, just a minute. Okay, just a minute. Huh? Any other comments? Any other comments about these hypotheses or hypotheses? Actually, here we have many hypotheses. I don't know. I'm pretty sure all of us have seen this, but this is the word female. And then if you take the FE out on the table, that means iron. And the word translated into iron, male. So, in English, like, it's just a play on words. Like, F-E is the element for iron, and then it says iron male, and then it says, I am iron man. <laughs> okay, this is fine. <laughs> okay, this is because we have Iron Man 3. Okay, you're female. Okay, so you're female. If you take the F-E... That's the, the like, it runs for, for iron, and then it says iron male, so I am Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. So, women are Iron Man. Okay, so this is her hypothesis, okay? Women are Iron Man, okay? We are Iron Man. We can deduce it. Okay, of course. So, enough of this part, let's move to the second reading, and continues about okay so if we look now here this is some if we look now to the second read uh, actually I used to but I have stopped playing this a long time ago and I don't find Competitors, I can't find a time. I can't, I can't find competitors, actually. Yeah. So, here, you like it and you still find competitors. Yeah, okay, good for you. I used to play with my dad. I used to play with my dad and when I got married, I stopped. So, actually, I stopped 19 years ago. <laughs> okay, this is my husband's fault, I know. Okay. So here, remember these were, were decisions that we have discussed at the beginning of this lecture? Now, I want you to look at these decisions again and tell me, okay? Sorry? Uh, yeah, we're going to read about the wisdom of crown, okay? So I want you here to take time and ask yourself if you would be more likely to trust a decision made by a single expert or a, consens a, a consensus reached by a large group, okay? If a large group agree, give a consensus means to agree, give agreement about this action, would you take the move? Would you uh, agree or would you say, no, I'm going to take the idea of the experts only? Yes. I will go with the crowd because usually they waive their pros and cons and they, they try to figure out better decisions for everybody. So you would trust the crowd more than, than one expert? One expert, yeah. Okay. What about you? Not all the crowds, but we are advised even in our traditions to go and ask people their opinion, have their opinions, because there's a saying that thus who, who shares people's, who takes people's opinions, he only, he shares, yes. 
he shares there. Those من شارك Thus, who share other people's opinions have share also their brain, their mental capabilities. And in English, it says two heads better than one. This is a proof verb. Two heads better than one. Better than one, yes. So I think for not everything, because like as we've as we've studied in the last in the last reading, that sometimes there is the herd mentality when everyone when there is a spur moment and a mania that drives everyone into one into making one decision, okay, there is some times when you have to even question the crowd. You do not go like with the current all the time, <laughs> blindly. No, no, I agree. <laughs> I think about what? What you say? Because, uh, I mean, you have to take a lot of things in consideration. If you're going to talk to the expert, you can't, like, it can't be this one person who has, like, one master's degree. It has to be... One moment. Yeah, I know, but it's it's annoying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, it has to be like someone who's who's you know dedicated like their whole lives to this. Then you can trust that one uh, like you know expert. And at the same time, if you're gonna go with the crowd, it can't be like a stupid crowd. It's not a crowd that's running after a trend or like a whole like you know their brain is just crazy about the thing. There have the, the crowd has to be people who are some against and some are for. So you can see the contradiction, and then you make up your mind. Okay. Thank you. Would you take uh, advice of an expert, only one expert, uh, in one of these decisions, or a group of people come to agreement about this? A group of people is better. Yeah, many. Even if they don't, uh, if they are not uh, uh, ex uh, these experts or uh, that much expert in this same. Yeah, because I will take ideas from many different of people better than one expert. He maybe don't know everything. Everyone has, uh, has its own point of view, so they will be benefit to me to take all of the uh, I agree with what they said, that, about, that you have to see both sides. The expert, what he's saying, and the crowd. Because sometimes it doesn't mean if the majority of people do this, that it doesn't mean that it's right. And it has been proven in history and all. All this dis uh, discussion, this is your research question. Whenever you, we do the, a discussion, it's not in vain or not to wait fine. Please, I want you to be aware of this. The discussion brings more ideas. This is a type of brainstorming. Yes, exactly. Different points of view because you, you need to write an argumentative to, uh, essay about these topics. You need to research, you need to find information, and then be able to express it. Okay, do you have any? That the expert, he won't be called an expert if he's not known. Like he know, he knows what he's doing. Then we should listen to the expert. Then. Okay. Yeah. Said the the crowd couldn't always be you know right. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. He has it, the expertise. Yeah, maybe. Hmm? If this situation happened to me, I would like to take a step back and disappear from the crowd and the expert and stay at my house and wait for the rest of the Wait to figure out by myself. <laughs> I will figure it out by myself. Okay, good for you. So, some people say no, we should take the wisdom of the crowd and this is what Francis uh, Galton says in, his, in this article and some people, actually, we can't say because it is, he's a researcher. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, James uh, here in his book, The Wisdom of the Crowd, he quoted uh, the experiment the, the, uh, done by uh, Francis Ga Ga Galton in 1906, the British scientist. Okay, so he's a scientist, he's a researcher. What did he find? Okay. Galton was a man obsessed with two things the measurement of physical and mental qualities and reading. That's why he went to a fair. This fair for displaying, the farmers used to display cattle. Yeah, the sheep and cattle and horses and all of, uh, all of, and ox and all of these in order to see the, the best breed. 
Okay, so he went there as a scientist, which is sometimes awkward or unfamiliar to see a scientist going to such a fair with peasants and farmers having fun and eating and celebration and competing. So his notion was to find or trying to prove the relation between wise or wisdom and breed. So his experiments left him with little faith in the intelligence of the average person. Okay. Actually, he believes that the stupidity and wrong-headedness of many men and women being so great as to be scarcely credible. Not now. <laughs> okay, so this is his theory then. But again, uh, to, again, we can't, we can't generalize. We can't say this is not true now. It has some true aspects as well up till now. So Francis Galton stumbled on a simple but powerful truth. He found that under the right circumstances, groups are remarkably intelligent and are often smarter than the smartest people in them. So sometimes he found that experts, they know. But sometimes people, or a group of people, when they come to a concession or when they come to a sort of agreement, they find, he found or he discovered that they are wiser and smarter than the expert or the smartest one of them. So one of the striking things about the wisdom of the crowd that he talked about it is that even though its effects all around us, it's easy, to mess, you can simply mess it and you can't catch this wisdom of the crowd and it's hard to be accepted. Why it's hard to be accepted? Because we assume that the key to solving problems or making good decisions is finding by the right one, the expert, the leader, exactly. That's why we always seek to find a one, a leader to guide us and take us to the other part or the other bank of the river. Exactly. Even if we're going to drown, no problem. We seek this reader or a leader all the time, and this is right. Sometimes we have true leaders. They are capable of taking us to the safe, to the other shore, and reach the shore safely. So, an intelligent group uh, here it's, he says, an intelligent uh, group figures out how to use mechanisms like market prices. Again, I can't depend on. Uh, wisdom of the crowd or I can depend on a hunch to make pricing like for example pricing a book pricing a bag okay it needs mechanism it needs strategy to make the pricing based on several indicators based on the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, customers demand the customers need based on the competition the levels of competition based on reduction based on the quality the quality all of these so here in some cases, we need to implement some mechanisms, like, for example, pricing, uh, market prices, or intelligent voting system. We need to develop an intelligent voting system. So we need to resort to some mechanisms to produce corrective uh, adjustments. All of that represents not uh, what any one person in group thinks, but rather, in some sense, what they all think, what they all think based on different decisions, after brainstorming and gathering all these decisions together, we can come with a mechanism or strategy to develop a certain thing. Yet, however, paradoxically, the best way for a group to be smart is for each person in, in it to think and act as independently as possible. Okay? If you depend on the others, if you depend on other a person in the group and you don't do your task, you don't do your thinking by yourself, this group is not wise at all and you won't find this wisdom that can be missed and that can be hard to see. Okay? So this is the summary for the whole reading. Yes, please. Um, when he said the group, someone in a group might be smarter than the smartest person in the group, it also applies to what circumstances. I mean, if you get a bunch of scientists and then you put someone who's spent their whole life living, you know, like in the country, in the middle of nowhere, and he's going to be the stupidest one there. But if you take that group and they go hiking and 
the most intelligent person would be like, okay, let's go there. But the person who's been living there for years and years and years can tell you that that's dangerous. That's going to lead to something that's going to kill you. So, and circumstances, and the circumstances around you. Like, I remember there was a definition in, um, in the short story subject, it was called naturalism. It is a, uh, a psychological and philosophical approach that argues that there is a logical explanation to everything and to human behavior affected by the surrounding elements. Thank you for sharing this. I think it's also the practical knowledge versus the theoretical knowledge, plus having, having someone in the group not criticizing, contesting, playing the advocate. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the other, the advocate or the, yeah, and contest, contesting their beliefs would even in, stimulate their brains into bringing, more, finding more evidence to solidify their positions, plus even finding better ways, faster and shorter ways and solutions to the problem. Actually, Stephen Covey uh, presented this in the idea of having six thinking hats. Okay, Stephen Covey's theory about thinking hats is that each one of us in a group, if, you are, if we are now having this group, and each one of us is trying to uh, criticize and support and uh, illustrate and explain a certain issue or the topic under discussion, we will find that each one of us is wearing a different color. Different, this, is, this means different opinions. So Stephen Covey's six thinking hats were actually about different ways of thinking. And it's healthy that because... No, to one, uh, we can find a, an equivalent match to each one his own unique uh, characteristics and unique, unique personality. So we have to take advantage of this. We have to make a heterogeneous, not homogeneous group, heterogeneous, different, uh, with different ideas and different people and different characteristics and different personalities. So someone would wear a hat that is so serious like the black one. And someone is going to wear that hat that is so emotional, like the red one. Okay, so one is going to interpret this case according to his emotion. The other one is going to interpret this case according to facts. He's very serious, according to facts and giving evidence. And someone is going to be optimistic. Okay, this is the one who's wearing the yellow hat. And one is going to be very... Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, then we will find the yellow hat. The yellow hat, he is the organizer of the whole team. He is the leader who can give room to others to participate, who can shift between one point into the other to cover all of this. That's why even when we make a group or we make a meeting or organize any sort of a meeting in groups, we need to have this sort of variety, different hats. Okay, and of course, the white hat, this is the, fa uh, this is the fact, okay, the, the black hat, actually, this is the uh, pessimistic, okay, but the white hat, this is why, this is fact, okay, so, again, this is how to come up with the wisdom of the crowd, by having this homogeneous group, but if you have homogeneous, if you don't couple, except with the one who are exactly like you, like, yeah, exactly, like, what would they say? Birds with the same, yeah, birds with the same feather flock together. This is true, okay, to some extent. But again, it's good to know about others. It's good to know about their culture, their traditions, their ideas. Because exchanging ideas, in the, by doing this, enriches, enriches your ideas and your uh, 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 intellectual ability. And you, you are going to give the wisdom of the crowd. Okay, so this is his main point, and this is the whole summary for the old reading. I want you now to scan the text to answer the uh, true-false question on page 107. Read the sentences and go back to the text to, say, to see whether they are true or false.
Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I delete my room. I can check again. Don't worry. Yeah, you're gonna be at your office. Uh, but at one, I, I have another class. Yeah, you always uh, have one like that. Yeah, yeah. Because I have another class, writing class from one to from uh, eleven to one. Okay, after directly after this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she can show you. Okay, just let's concentrate and finish this read. Read the sentence and scan back to the text or the reading text in order to say whether they are true or false. Okay, page 107, true or false about the text. Okay, you're here in the reading or in the writing in 111, uh, uh, sorry, from 11 to 1. supporters of exercising, like for example Mark Swain and the other one who are the supporters, like the other one, George uh, yes, exactly. So one vote is one supporter and one vote for uh, opponent and opponent. Exactly. Exactly. And you refer to the quote, saying, for example, when you talk about the uh, supporters, you're going to say like what was said and you take from the code. This is the supporter. And when you talk about the opponent, like what was said by Mark Twain and the opinion of opponent, for example. And then you come okay, okay, I'm gonna move on. And then you come to the third body paragraph when you talk about your own analysis. What what do you what, uh, what's your analysis? Those who are supporters, why? And those who are opponents, why? Giving reasons only. So you're going to talk first about What's the idea of those who are supporters and what do they say and the, those who are opponents? What do they say? And in body paragraph 3, you're going to talk about your own analysis. Why they are supporters and why they are opponents? And finally, in the conclusion, you're going to give your own opinion. Are you one of the supporters or are you one of the opponents? Yeah, in the conclusion. And restatement, please. Exactly. This is the third body paragraph where you talk, where you're talking about the benefit, the advantages of exercising. Exactly. And then you're going to talk about the disadvantage because those who are opponent, they think that it hurts or it's not beneficial to their bodies in such a way. Okay? Hmm. Yeah, you have to. That is not agreeing. One is agreeing about the benefit of exercise and this is what you're going to be attacking. And the other one is talking about no, exercise is not important. So we are going to talk about both of them. Yeah, I guess uh, 800 words. Okay, have you finished? Now, girls, have you finished? My ladies. Sorry? <laughs> okay. Read the sentence and go back to the text. Sorry? From one to three, yeah. Uh, the 
similarities of that part. Yeah, similarities from, from, yeah, you have to. Okay, excellent. No, no. Really, excellent, okay. But, yeah, yeah. For the cover. The coast. When I open the your team A, I find the parts highlighted. I highlighted with the uh, uh, website address. If you're taking from my website, they give me the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we judge. Don't worry, we judge. You guys can see. Yeah, yeah. I can. When I click, it tells me that I have my 17 papers submitted by the I see your point. I see your point. When I click, it tells me I can see it. Okay, we can see it. And we judge. We judge that this grid it has to be like this because it's already taken from the original case study. So similarity is, is huge. I know, yes. I know, I know because it's uh, taken from the original case study, which is true. This is what's required from you to build the grid based on the original case study. Yeah, I've seen all of, uh, I've seen uh, all the, yeah, you're there, Mariam and Mariam, but I can't recall the others. Good for you. This is to save your rights. But this is new. Like, when we submitted earlier, like, the one uh, uh, uh. got that, so we kind of thought we were going to do it again. Yeah. yeah. La, la, la. Don't worry. Don't worry, and I can check again today. Okay, yeah. after a finish. She uploaded it again. She's going to have that seat. Very seat, yeah. Okay, so please, let's go back to our text. Okay, forget about the team A, please. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, who's going to start? Number one. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Sentence number one. The reading suggests that Francis Galton con contributed to the field of oh God, statistical <laughs> measurement. True. This is true. Huh? Yes. Galton's original hypothesis about the intelligence of people was confirmed false. False. It wasn't confirmed. Good. Number three. Hmm. Yes? Jane uh, Sirwicki has reached a different conclusion about crowds from, the, from that of Charles Mackin. True. Okay, because Charles McKay was talking about craze of crowd, the maniac, uh, how they are sometimes have be, become maniac. The best decisions are always made by people who are experienced in the field. The best decisions are always, always. Okay, see the word generalization. We, we said, remember? Okay, mm -hmm. always. Okay, if it says sometimes, remember we talked about this before using adverbs of frequency, okay? Here, using always, this means 100%, okay? 100% sure. Are you 100% sure? Okay, so it's false. But when you use usually, this is 90%. When you use all, this is 
75%, for example. Sometimes 50%, 50-50. Uh, rarely, this is 25% sure, never 0% sure, okay? Uh, so, Rocky says the groups are uh, vulnerable, vor vulnerable. vulnerable to bad dishes. decisions. <laughs> they're making when there are uh, rules that meaning uh, mention, order, and maintain, order and uh, focus. Yeah, True. Keep order and focus. Uh, I think true. Okay. No, actually. Why? Why it's false? Uh, who can say why it's false? Good decisions. To good decisions when there are rules. Okay. Not sometimes bad decisions. Okay. Huh? Who's going to answer this? Well, uh, Schwarzky warns that group conformity can lead to poor judgment. That is false. Yes, this is false. That is false because, uh, as as I, I deducted from whatever he from whatever is said. Group conformity can lead to poor judgment. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That the masses, when you depend totally on the masses, that can lead to bad. bad because he's a great supporter for the wisdom of the crowd. Okay. No. True. Number three, true. Okay. Um, this article tends to support the, uh, the validity of democratic forms of government. True. We are, t we are talking about the wisdom of the crowd and we have to make heterogeneous groups. So actually this is democracy. Okay. So our reading strategy today, okay, we have uh, talked about uh, summarizing and we've talked about uh, uh, making a deduction and deducing and we've talked about generalization and avoid making generalization. Now we're going to talk about analogy. Okay, so what does it mean, analogy? How, what, what do we mean by? Analysis. Yeah, exactly. So, an analogy, this is a study, a study of analyzing, exactly. So an analogy, it's a kind of comparison where we analyze, where we compare. It compares something we know little about it to something that we know more about it, okay? So if we're familiar with thing and another one that we are unfamiliar, what, what, when we draw this type of uh, comparison, this is called, uh, called analogy, okay? Like here, for example, in economic situations, negative feedback works a bit like your eyes do. As the light gets brighter, your pupils get smarter, uh, smaller and lit in, the, uh, in less light. But what if your eyes work as a positive feedback to your students or pupils, uh, as a positive feedback mechanism? In sunlight, your pupils would open wide and damage the retina. Okay, you know the, this retina in, uh, in the eye, the, one of the structure of the eye. Okay, so here, what, what does he mean? He's making an analogy, okay, like similarity. Similar, similar, uh, making this uh, similes, yeah, making a simile. But with comparison, with contradicting, comparative. This is a sort of comparative simile. Okay? So, what do he mean? What does he mean, sorry? He means what? Hmm? He, is, uh, he is drawing he's drawing a comparison. At the same time, he's giving us a metaphor. If I, if, if, if I, when I receive negative feedback, I should really look into it more. The same way our eyes constrain and limit the sun rays, uh, the sun rays that comes into that that is, that is received that is received by eyes, in order not to not to damage the whole image. Whereas if I receive a full blast of positive of positive feedback or effects without even you know looking into it and having a second glance and regulating it, that would also damage my perception, which he similar, like, which he describes as the eyes being wide open to the sun, which will damage the eyesight. I think so. Exactly. So, again, what did you get? Another opinion or another interpretation for this analogy? Hmm? 
Hmm. What do you understand? In simple words, what do you understand? Okay. Okay. Something that I do not know much about. I would be wary about. I would not talk much about. I would even read more about. But something I know, like, well, familiar, and I know, yeah, I would go and defend and give explanations and give statistics and tell them that this person is also like that and this person uses the, the following methods. But with some, something that I'm, uh, that I'm unfamiliar with or my information are limited about it, I would be worried about making generalization. Okay, this is to some extent uh, right and simpler. Uh, like, for example, if someone uh, does something, like, for example, someone will write a story, and if he gets only positive comments about it, he's not going to improve. But if there is a negative uh, comment, but in a respectful way, of course, comment. yes, comment. yes, he will improve, and he will, um, yeah. Adapt himself yeah. and change himself and improve himself. Good one. Okay, so this is the point of having feedback, constructive feedback, positive feedback, okay, not for, uh, uh, positive or negative, it's constructive, formative, is good for us. Oh, she said it. Yeah? <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay, she said it. She explained this in a very academic way. Okay, so No, I'm just, yani, well, you said that, but I wanted to say, like, when he says it works like our eyes do, sometimes we ignore these feedbacks. If, if we don't like them, we don't care for them. Yes. And then we make up our own uh, assumptions, which is not constructive at all. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mark. Okay, and so let's see the other part here of this analogy. For example, writers also use, use analogies to make discoveries or to argue a point like here. We don't know much about A, but we do know that A has similarities to B. Therefore, whatever is true of B may also, may, may also be true of A. Okay, whatever is true for B may also be true for A. See the language of analogy, how you analyze, how you interpret, this is, should be seen in your argument. Okay, possibility in your argument. How to analyze, okay, based on some indicator, okay. So, we don't know much about A, but, however, okay, we, ha we have a sort of similarity between A and B. Therefore, okay, conclusion, consequently, okay, B may see the language, you shouldn't be so decisive, you shouldn't be sh so sure. Because you haven't tested this uh, and theory or hypothesis, okay? So you can be 100% sure. To apply this or to do this, the, uh, some exercise here about analogy, uh, several readings in this book use analogies that we have studied up to now, so far. So reread these selections. You have selections on page 108. Go to page 108. We have selections from the readings that we have studied before. Read, reread these selections and mark them with an uh, I, okay, if the analogy, yeah, this is I. Yeah, I, if the analogy is used to illustrate a difficult concept, or A, if the analogy is used to argue a point. So we have I and A. Yeah. About the argument. Read and tell me here the argument. So this is very important because how to argue, how to write your analysis for this argument. A, if the analogy is used to illustrate difficult concepts. And A, if the analogy is used to argue a point. Okay. Purple. Uh, were humans born to run? Uh, should I read the whole thing? Um, okay. I think it's an argue. Argue? Yes, compares humans to other animals to understand how they can make uh, this claim. Let's consider what actually, if it's comparison, could it be the illustrative difficult? Uh, okay, so do you think it's an argument, eh? I'm confused. Okay. <laughs> it was so relating he, how the body was, how much, how much distance it runs, how, how it is. Do you think it's uh, but again, an illustration? 
Again, he's proving a point, so it could be uh, arguing. It's arguing. the language itself. How do we know that this is an argument from the language? However, maybe, perhaps, he's not sure. It's claimed. It's, it's argued. All these verbs. Remember, we've studied these verbs. When you summarize and report on your summary, if you uh, sure, 100% sure, and in agreement with the summary, or you report uh, neutrally. Remember, we've studied this in the last year. Mm -hmm. So it's an argument. Number one, it's an argument because of the word. Uh, even um, this claim, because to understand mm -hmm. how they can make this claim. So mm -hmm. since this means it's still an argument. Argue. Okay. And another uh, word is uh, this claim and uh, the other one between even. Yeah, yeah. Even. even. Yeah, even. It's also like an argument. Okay. Number two. Just read the sentence and tell me. I think it's uh, a mistake. Okay. Because you didn't uh, get the similarities between the words and uh, smell. Exactly. So here it's an illustration. It illustrates about difficult concepts without arguing about it, without gi giving facts. He's yeah. giving facts all the time. Exactly. So number three. Number three. Argument. Why? Because he talks about the musicals and the uh, mouth, comparing what your mouth does when you make vowel sounds. He's comparing both, both tones and uh, the uh, musical note. Okay. There's comparing. You can see the effect, and if you uh, sing the words, something yeah. is going to happen. Okay, do you think it's an art or it's an illustration description? No, it's illustration. Because like, using conditional, okay, when you use a conditional sentence, this means that based on we have something, okay? So a fact, a proven fact. So this is you an, an illustration. You can see. You can see. That's why all these language, okay, all these words. Number four, yes, Rama. There's telepomenia to the dot-com bubble. Dash's book also makes it evident that like the relatively mild recession, 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 following the burst of the dot-com bubble, telepomenia economic impact was minor since only a fraction of the economy was devoted to telep trading. With the Amsterdam exchange and other Wanting no part of it. It's an illustrate. Okay, you think why? The comparison? Because of the comparison you mean? But here okay, yeah. Okay. But here in the in the previous one, number three, it compares musical an instrument to a mouth by describing the mechanisms. Okay? So this is illustration. But here it compares Telepomenia to the dot com. Actually, this is what, this is not illustration, this is not description, this is finding a sort of similarity between two extremes that are not tangible. For example, like dot com, this is a not abstract, so sorry, two abstract nouns. So he's comparing between abstract nouns, but compared to a mouse and Describe the mechanism and structure of using and find similarities between the mouse and the. Uh, the this is illustration. So number three is uh, is illustration. But number four, it's an argument because the topic actually it's argued. It, it hasn't been proven yet. Exactly. Exactly. It's not proven. Exactly. It hasn't been. Yeah. It's not proven yet. It hasn't been proven yet. Okay? So that's why number four is an argument, while number three it's an illustration, because we know that this is right. This is, uh, or, or actually, this is the fact. Okay? So uh, our vocabulary part here, again, as you can see, what are the 
final suffix for the noun. Here, as you can say, firm. Confirm, uh, conf confirm, sorry, confirm, confirm, list, I, S, T, confirm, T, I, T, Y, okay, consent, uh, S, U, F, okay, a T, enforce, meant, okay, as you can see, we can uh, end the noun with M, E, N, T, meant, S, I, O, N, or I, O, N, sometimes, T, I, O, N, so we have T, I, O, N, uh, S, I, O, N, uh, I O N only. We have I T I T like statistic and C I A N, okay, or uh, S S I O N. All these final suffixes to present a noun. And for verb, we have verbs that ends with I N G. So we have I'm interested in this class for example or I find this class very interesting okay so interested in this is what yeah exactly uh, no it's not a verb I'm interested in I'm interested I am this is a verb I'm interested in this is an adjective describing a person okay ends with ed I'm interested okay so this is an adjective describing a person okay ends with ed but this uh, class is very interesting. I'm describing the class. I'm describing something. That's why I resort to the adjective that ends with, or I use the adjective that ends with ing. Okay? So we have started in the previous table adjectives ending with ed, and now adjectives ending with ing, al, ed again, isiv, and iv in sometimes, all of these, al or al. All of these. So now I want you to read this code here about the wisdom of the crowd. This is from the reading. And I want you to fill in the gaps, the sentences below, based on your understanding of this code, using words from the uh, table below, uh, above. Yeah, this is the last exercise to do now, because we have other class. Of course, I need you to do number B and number C and D. C, uh, this is discussion, okay? Page 110, page 111, this is homework. I need you to do number B, C, D as homework. Gina is so peaceful today. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. No, why you don't want to speak? Yeah, no. She's going to eat now. <laughs> okay, we have another class. Would you please do it fast? Okay. Or we can postpone it uh, as part of the homework as well, okay? Yay. Let's finish this part now. More, uh, homework. <laughs> more homework, yes. Mark your attendance, please. I have, I have something to say. Okay. Like, when I, I came in, homework, uh -huh. I have a few questions. Uh -huh. When I came in, this box had a sound like. So I fixed it. Uh -huh. When I fixed it, I, I left it. What, like, when could be, it, instead of 9 minutes, uh -huh. I made it 9 minutes. Oh, five. Oh, five. Okay. Okay, just my... Uh, my uh, I've been right. No, no, no. <laughs> so we still got time. still got Okay. So, no, you can go. Okay. Let's, let's continue the exercises uh, next week. Yeah? Hey. From the e-library or, or from the internet? You can go to Miss Nina next door, okay? She can help you about finding. Yeah. yeah. No, Wikipedia is not very kind. No, no, Wikipedia is not. Okay, other articles from university, like uh, yeah, Iowa University, uh, Oxford University, all of these.
Okay, I have the team. No, the midterm, the midterm, and I, I, you didn't. Okay, just come to my office uh, at one. You can see it because I have the SLS. They keep checking from the last uh, Thursday. I have ten days now, up till now. Uh, Tuesday uh, from three to five. Okay. Yeah. After my office. Okay. Ask because I have class. I need to run.